think we have to have a pretty straightforward and easy to understand formula for how these monies will be allocated. And you know, this discussion hasn't done much to to shine any light on that for me. And I guess that's kind of why we would want this board to look at that, right? So we can identify some of those areas that were whether it's agriculture or recreation. I guess in my mind you can pull out of your driveway and be in a recreation area in whether it's winter or summer, whatever, in ten minutes if you drive any direction. I think when you hit the nail on the head, it argued for farm preservation. Agricultural. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably around here what would be more palatable. Yeah, I think the citizens would go for that. I, I think that um, to probably someone wiser than I once said, you got to start somewhere. And from my perspective, I think if this is something that you're looking to consider, what I've seen in other communities, but also my own perspective just from doing this for 27 years is you really want to start with, with looking at some vision. And I think that I've worked with the county staff. I've seen that they've got a lot of vision for how to retain the quality of life that everybody moves to this valley for. You're going to lose it if you don't do something about it. Well, that's a lot different than it was it is a lot different than 20 years ago when I used to come over here so my feeling is that really it's about starting somewhere and I don't know whether it's the committee but I do think that at the end of the day what you want to put forward if that's where you end up going is what are we really trying to accomplish and I think you have some passionate individuals who care very much about this county and who believe in sustaining this county for a long time and quite frankly as I've seen, who have lived here for decades and know why they stay here. And that seems to me to be a good place to start to create that vision that then can be moved forward, if appropriate, to the rest of the population. Thank you. Anyone else want to comment or speak on this issue? I just have a, a thought about the, back to the proposed potential committee. It would seem to me that once you all decide kind of the direction we're headed, or not a single direction, but maybe there's a two or three things you want to do. And if it's ag preservation of agricultural land, my, I guess my question is, what do the municipalities bring to the table? I don't know that there's much. There's a bit, in a, Midway's got a little bit. I don't know if there's yeah, five acres. the agricultural ground is all in the corporate, and I think it brings pork. But, but the, only, the only question that is they would be in control of spending the money basically in the unincorporated area. Um, is that what you would want? No, you're right. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, when this committee was set up, it was, they were going to identify all kinds of critical land. And we were looking at the Lakeford Channel down through Beaver City, uh, Snake Creek through Beaver City. Oh, so the development didn't encroach on those on the yeah. critical pieces of but infrastructure. Lake Creek's developed in the city. From Mill Road down to houses. There's, there's nothing left. Until you, you get to the you know. North Fields. And that, that's what I'm saying is I'm not sure. Now Walsburg's different, Midway's different because you have undeveloped properties in both of those areas that are still agriculture. But independence does, hideout doesn't, interlocking doesn't. Now, I'm, just, I'm just throwing a question sure. out. Sure. If you've got $5 million, maybe you want the people that actually represent the landowners in those areas where you can do with the land, maybe representing the people. Yeah, but I think the, the thought behind a lot of this, Mike, was the fact we had a unified front. Well, and I can see, I think that's see important. Everybody would go in the same direction. Because all of the cities, even though they're in the city, they're still county residents, and so And those people... That's true. And the majority, or at least half of the voters, was that county, well, majority, I think, live within the cities now. Yeah. Right, but the value that will pay for the bond was outside the city. Right, but it, it would be those voters that decide whether they want even able for us to do this or not. Right. But the, the value. Yeah, right. What you're saying is that it seems almost unfair that the people who own the property that are getting discussed about no. the money being spent on, they're not the ones that are on the board. No, what I'm saying is those that are paying for the bond mostly live outside the city limit. 
because the value of property it pays it's based on value. Uh, oh, oh, I guess not. I see what you're saying. So the value of the property is outside the city limits, and so the people that are paying the majority of the money are outside. Not all, the, not all the city limits. If you take all the city limits, that's not true. But Heber City's uh, forty percent, thirty something, thirty something percent of the value of the county. And so when you look at the value base of paying for it, it's not who votes for it. Who votes for it is. And you just value it absolutely, but who pays for it? It's outside. But the the, uh, the voting member, of the they'd be weighted the same way. You'd have more just because the Heber only gets one vote, voting member, with respect to like a Walter gets a vote. So they would be more agricultural based as part of the voting members. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. sense. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you got county with two Walter, with so the majority would still be in the areas that. So I guess that's independence would get a, but I yeah, guess we'd do that. that is, I mean, this would be a pretty big board, but getting everybody there all at once is probably still going to end up to be a manageable seven member. Should we put, do we want to put this on an agenda for a vote on moving forward on a committee or, or what do you think? Or, or do we need to just say, hey, let's do it? We may not even need to vote, we just need to talk. Well, I guess just even well. before we set up the committee, Steve, what, would this interlocal agreement have to be passed by all those jurisdictions? That was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they would all say, yeah, we agree to be to do this and we'll be part of the committee based on these. But I think I think as a council we could say we're we're uh, looking at doing an open face or doing something to preserve, preserve uh, agricultural land. That we'd like you to join in with us and this is how we'd like to do it. And we'll use this as a and a template. template to go about it. So just procedurally, I think what Greg and Kendall have been asking is, do we do we put this on the next agenda? We approve this, maybe with the addition of the new town to come into existence. Well, you'd have a ten member instead of seven, or whatever number it is. Oh, I think they've got to go through the whole whole thing and update it. Right. To, to 2017 and bring it, to, bring it back to us for something to as a as like a resolution or what? Would, it, would that is that what it would be? I guess it would be a resolution to a resolution. Because I think what to go forward with, with the if we you know, we would probably the council would need to vote on this first. Yeah. That's if that's a procedure we want to follow. That's what I'm asking because that's the way I would understand. Yeah, right. But maybe not. But what do you think, Scott? Is that does that sound about right from a legal perspective? <laughs> Yeah, I think you want to get the groundwork laid first to say what are we voting on rather than... And that would be my resolution. And, and a resolution would be we want to move this forward. A resolution, because I know we've agreed on things and even voted on things in the past, but if it's not in the form of resolution, it's not necessarily in the... Uh, what resolutions can be verbal, but it be, okay. can be okay. well, written resolution is always easier to say here's what we decided. Okay. I think I think we ought to put that on. How? When do we... When do you think, Doug? When could we... Have kind of a red line version of this, and, and um, next meeting is going to be a busy meeting. But um, if you'd like, I can put it off to the 21st. I think um, uh, I'd like some guidance from you though, because about 21st is oh, you mean that is our next meeting? Yeah. Right? Why don't we maybe we could look at it on can the you first. Work this? Okay. If if we've got a busy meeting on the that's only a week away. Mm -hmm. you, we've got a busy meeting that night. Why don't we just do it first? Meeting in July. In July. I don't think we're in. I mean, yeah, we want to take action, but I don't think it's a mad rush, is it? We want to look at it and get it done. But. Could you give me some guidance about 40% of this is about a uh, hiring a full-time employee? I, I think we leave that out. Yeah, that's what yeah, I yeah, I, agree. Yeah, I think it will be that. We could leave that out. It talks about three parts in the leave staff. The, leave the staff out. I think it's just putting this together putting this board together and getting the participation from the other entities i think that's the need i think if we if we were to decide to do this board i think it would make the most sense for our two at large members to be on the board and even though mike i think you're possibly politically opposed to the council putting it on the ballot you could still serve as a member of the board and functioning as yeah we're giving that some thought as well because you have such a passion for this I, it doesn't matter to me. I only, I only represent half of Heber City and some of the other incorporated counties. So. No, I think it's about that. The 
focus of the program. But Steve and, and Mike, would you want to talk with Doug over the next couple of weeks about just <coughs> forming the, the resolution that comes back to us in a few weeks? Well, we don't have Is that okay with you too? Or? Yeah. I'm not going to worry about Doug. It's the plate's full. He's got some control. Well, that's what I, that's why I say if, if you need till the first of next month, I think that's completely understandable. Well, it does with all the stuff yeah. going on. I don't think we need to see it next week, but if you can, that's great. I just don't think it's. It's on. So I'll work with Scott's office and, and okay. have them talk to Mindy and okay. maybe yeah. bounce it off with Steve and Mike too, since they would be the ones eventually on the board. Yeah. If I can make another suggestion or have a thought that, Wendy, you mentioned that there are people who have been thinking about this and working on this, Tracy, perhaps, or one of those. Um, I, I was intrigued by what you said that this needs to start with a vision and perhaps there is a draft of that vision out there somewhere i think it would be very helpful for us to see see that or have a suggestion about what that is or what that might be and if you have that or if you get us that that would be helpful yeah i mean absolutely i think that what i've seen is at a certain point there's a question as to whether as a community you're kind of spinning your wheels trying to look at that vision or whether this is something that if we start moving things forward, this is something that really the council would consider um, and, and you know, put a little bit of oomph behind. So I think you can definitely count on the fact that there is a lot of work that's been done that could come forward from that vision perspective. I think to go Thank along you. with that, the, uh, the vision, if you look at Heber City's general plan, they updated in 2008 to talk a lot about this conservation of easements, TDRs, and things like that. By the plan, it's really interesting to look at it. We have projections on what their population would be for the town of Keeper. It's going to be hit about 14,000 by 2020. I think we hit that in 2015. And so that was only a seven year period that we blew those numbers out of the water. But pull that up, Keeper City's general plan that goes into great detail on a vision for 2020 that addresses a lot of these issues. I think uh, we had a vision. We did a vision statement for this, uh, what was that in Title 16? Now I have to go through my file and see if I find it. I did a search and everything I found in Title 16 is what I have. Yeah. So, is there anything in the general plan? It might have been in the general plan. I'll look. Yeah, we did put the open base portion in the general plan. Okay. okay. Um, we're going to move on.